So Simon Baron Cohen wanted to devise a test that would actually discriminate people who have synesthesia from those who don't and might generate associations whenever they think of words uh, and so on. So his test was very simple. He just gave a long list of words, say a hundred or so words to the synesthete and asked them to generate colours. And then several months later or even years later he would repeat the test and say what colour is the word Moscow, what word is the colour table and so on and ask uh, the synesthete or synesthetes to generate colours. He would then do the same with people who don't have synesthesia and ask them to produce colours and maybe get retest them only a week later. And he could show that the people with synesthesia had very precise colours so they wouldn't just say that Moscow was blue, it might be a particular shade of blue, maybe with a purple tinge whereas the controls might say blue on one occasion and red on the other occasion, but they wouldn't give very elaborate uh, descriptions for them. And they, you could then do statistical tests to show that the people with synesthesia um, had far more uh, higher test retest scores than, than the controls who were using other mnemonic strategies such as associations. So one of the earliest attempts to, to show that synesthesia was real, uh, aside from a test-retest consistency, was to give them various perceptual tests that are very hard to fake. So one of the most well-known tests of synesthesia involves uh, an array of numbers 2 and 5 presented on a computer screen. And somebody who doesn't have synesthesia, when they're looking at these 2s and 5s, it just looks like a jumble of digits. But if you experience the number two as, say, red, and the number five as, say, green, that it might ena enable you to see a pattern within that apparent jumble. And maybe the number twos are lined up so you see them in a triangle. And this test was devised by Hubbard and Ramachandran uh, as related to the Ishihara test that's used for colour blindness. The idea is that you should be able to pass this if, if you have synesthesia. And one of the things that we find is that some synesthetes do seem to do quite well on this test. And this test is quite hard to fake because remember for most people it is just a jumble. And for synesthetes some of them are able to do it better. It tends to be those synesthetes who actually project colours actually onto the, uh, the, the screen. There are a whole group of other synesthetes who don't project them onto the screen. They see them in their mind's eye or they just associate five with red and so on. Or they see it as, as on an inner screen. And when they see this flashed on a screen, they tend not to get the colours and they also tend not to get the actual benefit. But for some synesthetes, they do get the benefit and it does seem to uh, correspond to their particular phenomenology, their, their conscious experience of the synesthesia. So it's quite a nice match between them doing well and what they actually consciously report. But it is true of a subset of synesthetes rather than all of them.